Hi, everyone. Hi. So like I mentioned in my previous video, April is a big month of birthdays. So our story problem is about three friends who had their birthday this week. And I'm going to read the story problem. And while we read, remember, we envision what is happening in the story. And that's another word, a big word, for making a movie in your head and imagining what's happening in the story. And what I like to do is close my eyes. I can't do that right now because I'm going to be reading. But you can do that at home and make that movie in your head. Remember, we read three times when we do story problems to really understand understand what's happening. We're going to read the first time to make sure that we understand who are the characters and what are they doing. The second time we read, we think of the numbers and what those numbers represent in the story. And then the third time we read, we consolidate that information, put it all together, and figure out what we're being asked to solve. So here we go, our first read. Samantha, Selena, and Alyssa each have a birthday this week and decided to have a big birthday bash. They invited mm, friends to join them for their birthday celebration. After they cut their big cake, mm, friends left the party. How many friends are still at their birthday celebration? Okay. So remember friends, pause the video to think about who is, who are the characters and what they're doing. Teachers, when you're ready, give me a thumbs up. All right, Miss T, what is happening in this story problem today? So Samantha, Selena, and Alyssa are having a birthday party. Yay, happy birthday. happy birthday. And they invited some friends to celebrate with them. But of course, this is just in our minds because right now no one can go to anyone's homes. Mm -hmm. And then some of them left the party. So we need to figure out how many people are still left at the party. Wow, thank you, Miss T. That's so much information and you helped us consolidate it. So now let's go into our second read and this is when we show the problem and we can pick our number set. So who would like to pick our number set for today? All right, Miss Rosales, you're the first one. Which one do you, what number do you want? I know you like to challenge us. Um, I would like for us to try 64 and 48. All right, and then remember you can zoom in to really get those numbers in there. And then I like to use the pen to, because it's thinner um, to squeeze in. I know it's very hard. Um, so they, oh, the first one is 64. And then Ms. Rosales will read our story problem once I put these in, but I'm gonna give you a task while we're reading. So while we're reading, I want you to think about these numbers, 64 and 48. and really ask yourself, what do those numbers represent in the story? All right, first of all, happy birthday, girls. Mm -hmm. Samantha, Selena, and Alyssa each have a birthday this week and decided to have a big birthday bash. They invited 64 friends to join them for their birthday celebration. After they cut their big cake, 48 friends left the party. How many friends are still at their birthday celebration. Okay, so what does that number 64 represent? So friends, remember, pause the video if you need more think time, and teachers, I see that you are ready. Ms. Hernandez, what does 64 represent in this story problem? So 64 is the number of friends that were invited to the big birthday party. Mm, wow, that's a lot of friends. I'm so glad that you guys know that many people. I don't think I know that many people. Well, maybe. You all. <laughs> all right. What is that number 48? 48, what does that represent? Miss T? 48 are the friends that left the party because they wanted just the cake. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> usually, I feel like usually at the end of parties you have cake. I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of birthdays. Yeah, I'm guessing it was, maybe it was the <laughs> end of the party. So that maybe is the end. And so they had the cake and they left. So 48 friends already had their cake. They were done partying. So they left. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to do our last read where we put all of the information together and ask ourselves, what are we being asked to solve? Samantha, Selena, and Alyssa each had a birthday this week and decided to have a big birthday bash. They invited 64 friends to join them for their birthday celebration. After they cut their big cake, 48 friends left the party. How many friends are still at their birthday celebration? So Ms. Fernandez, what are we being asked to solve in this problem? 
we need to figure out how many friends are still left at the birthday party when the 48 friends left after the cake. Ooh, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. So we know we need to figure out after they already had the cake, the 48 friends left, how many are left, are still at the party? How many friends are there? Hmm. So right now we are going to give some think time and work time to our teachers and for you at home to find a strategy to come up with the answer to this story problem. So I really want us to ask ourselves, is this a subtraction problem or an addition problem? Miss hmm. Rosales, what do you think? Well, you said a, a key word that the people left. There was a group of uh, people that left. So the group is not going to get bigger. It's going to get smaller. So we're going to have to subtract. Perfect. And we always subtract starting with our whole number, the largest number, which is our minuend, 64. And then we're subtracting how many friends left, right? And we know 48 friends left the party. So this would be our subtraction problem. Okay. So now, whenever you're ready, teachers, give me a thumbs up so that we can start showing everyone our strategy. All right, Ms. T, can you tell us what strategy did you use today? So I used the tens and ones strategy, and I wrote my equation just like you did horizontally to kind of help me figure out what I'm starting with and what I'm subtracting. And so I wrote 64 is my whole, and so I drew... I represented 64 in my tens and ones chart. And boys and girls, remember at home, we want to make sure we write the T for tens and actually have a T chart and O for ones to really show how we're going to be subtracting. So I drew six tens and four ones to represent 64. But because we're subtracting, I'm not going to be adding tens and ones. I'm taking them away. So I need to show how I'm taking those away. So I looked at 48 and I took away my ones first. But I was like, oh no, if I only have four ones, I can't take away eight. I need to borrow. So I borrowed from the tens and I decomposed that 10 into 10 ones down here. And then I subtracted by eight because I always start with my ones place first. So I took away eight and then I counted how many I had left over here. One, two, three, four, five, six ones left over. But I'm not just subtracting by eight, I'm subtracting by 48. So I can't forget my tens over here. So I took away four tens as well. One, two, three, four. And then I counted the number of tens I had left, which is just one because we use this one to decompose. So I had one left there. And so my answer was 16. Thank you, Ms. T. And so I'm going to show you that strategy just like Ms. T showed, but I'm also going to add the standard algorithm because I know that's one step that some of my friends are using now. So I'm going to show that with our standard algorithm side by side. So remember, when we do our standard algorithm, we line up our numbers with our tens lined up together and our ones lined up together in a vertical fashion. So we have 64 on the top because our whole number is always on the top. And then we have our minus. And then 48 is right lined up with each of the tens and the ones. All right, so we have our 64, but I notice that I cannot subtract. We always wanna start with our ones. I can't subtract eight from four. because That's kind of impossible, right? There's no more left. So I need to regroup. And when I see here, I saw how Miss T regrouped her tens. Um, borrowed them from the tens place. So I'm going to borrow a 10 from here. And if I have five, six tens and I take away one 10, I only have five left over, right? So this is going to change into a five. But then if I have 10 and four, that makes 14 because I have 10 here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we have to remember that, that that 10 is not disappearing it's moving to the other side and helping the ones place out. So 10 plus four is gonna turn into 14. So this changes from ten, four to 14. So now I can take away 14 minus eight. And so using our tens and ones really helps us visualize that or you can count back. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So here in the tens and ones, just like Ms. T did, she took away eight and I know eight is made up of five, six, 
seven, eight. And it's really important that you show that taking away because then you're gonna get confused as to how you got your answer. Okay, so I can do that and that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if I'm doing my standard algorithm, I can count up, right? And I like to do that or you can count back. So I like to start with eight and then go all the way up until I stop at 14. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm stopping at 14 because that's what I have in my um, um, algorithm. So that took six jumps to get to 14. So that's six here. So we got the same answer. Now I need to move to the tens place because it says five minus four tens makes one. And so I can do it on my uh, tens and ones chart too. So I know this part is already taken away because we regrouped it and used it for the ones place. So now I have to take away four more tens. One, two, three, four. And I have one 10 left over here and six ones left over. So 16 is my answer and I showed it using the um, tens and ones strategy, but also showing the standard algorithm. And it's really important to use that standard algorithm because you're gonna be seeing it for the rest of your life. So might as well get that exposure now and start working towards it if you can. But if you are having trouble and you wanna stay with that tens and ones, that's more than okay as well. All right, is there another strategy that anyone else wants to share, Ms. Hernandez? So I know, Ms. Yakimowicz, you have been talking a lot about using more efficient strategies. So I'm really challenging myself to use more of the mental math where I do that math work in my brain. Mm -hmm. So if we're having the problem of 64 take away 48, I know that that 48 is made up of a 40 and an 8. So I'm going to start by taking out that 40 out of that 64. And I know 40 is made of four tens. So I'm going to count back by taking away those four tens from 64. So 64 minus 10 is 54. Take away another 10 is 44. Take away another 10 is 34. And take away another 10 is 24. So I took away that 40. So I'm going to cross it out. But I have to remember, I still have to take away eight more from that 48. So I can either use counters, I can use my fingers, I, count, I could take away eight in my brain. So from that 24 that I had left over here, I'm going to count back and take away those last eight. 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. So my answer was 16. Wow, and that was so quick. That is a very efficient way. All right, so now I'm gonna revoice it so that everyone can have a second try to really consolidate that information. So Ms. Hernandez, she had 64 minus 48 and she wrote it horizontally. And then she decomposed 48 into 40 and eight and using those tens and ones because we know place value now. And then she realized and knows that 40 is made up of four tens. So we have 10, 10, hopefully they fit, 10, and then I'll put one more this way, 10. So four tens make 40. And then she went to the side and she showed how 64 minus 10 is 54, um, 54 minus 10 is 44, 44 minus 10 is 34, and lastly, 34 minus 10 is 24. And so she had 24, and then she used our mark, um, she used counters, and this is why it's the Hernandez strategy, because it's a mix of that, uh, of that um, counting back and counters, right, drawing, to really visualize that. So she drew eight counters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And she showed that she, sub she crossed out each of these tens to really visualize that she already took those away. She doesn't need to do that again. And I'm gonna use a different color to show taking away. So she's at 24 and then counting back 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. And then she was left with a total or a difference of 16. Wow, and that's exactly what we got in our standard algorithm and in our tens and ones strategy. 
best. So let's see what Miss Rosales, what strategy you're doing today. So today I resorted back to an oldie but goodie, which is the number line. And so you'll notice that I rewrote the problem up here and just very much like what Ms. Hernandez pointed out, I decomposed the 48 into 40 and an eight. Um, but I noticed that she decomposed it into four tenths, so did I. I did four hops of tenths, started with my 64 and jumped back 10. 64, 54, 44, 34, and 24. But I still had that eight. Mm -hmm. and so I drew my eight and then I counted back 24, 23, 22, 21, and then 20. These are thicker because I wanted to show um, everyone that if you knew that 24 is 20 and four, you could just jump four down and then you still have four left in your eight and 19, 18, 17, and 16, and guess what? Same answer as Ms. Hernandez. No counters, but just doing the same thing on a number line. Perfect, and that was one, two, three, four different strategies that got the same answer. So that's why it's so important that you try two strategies, two different strategies, to really check to see if you got the correct answer. So we know, we're more than confident that 64 minus 48 is what, everyone? 16. 16. So 16 friends are still at the birthday celebration, and I hope they're having fun. So that everyone, must be the family. I know. I hope you have a great weekend, and we still have some other lessons, but I just wanted to tell you, have a great weekend, and thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.